Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and congratulations to Kamala Harris on the long play. Truly the gold digger of presidents, can we just say? You know, gold diggers, it's, a, it's, it's not the best method to win, but it is a flawless method. You know, it usually works. If you can, if you can partner up with a guy that's like, Kind of almost senile, in a position of power, definitely going to die very soon. If you can saddle up to that cunt right before the moment he dies, you can kind of take everything that he has. In most cases, it's money. In this case, it's the presidency. (laughs) And Kamala Harris has nailed that. Let's be honest. So congratulations to her. She will be in charge of everyone. Uh, The the old... uh, You know, congratulations to all of the people who who really thought that the ex-cop was going to do anything about police brutality. Your houses will be raided shortly. Um, I'm not going to make this a a full-on political podcast because I I, look, look, I what I'm going to tell to to be for forewarn you cunts, all right? To all of you MAGA cunts and all of you fucking BLM cunts and all of you people who fought so hard to settle for a guy that doesn't give a fuck about you, Biden. I want you to know that I truly don't give a fuck, so you shouldn't care about my opinion either, all right? I'm here to make cunts laugh. I will be talking about the election a little bit, but just know truly from the bottom of my heart, I don't give a fuck, so neither should you, okay? Can we agree on that? Yes. You know, do I know anything about uh, the American politics? No. Am I going to speak on it anyway? Yes. Is that like most people who talk about politics of any kind? Yes, as well, okay. Am I got? Am I going to get some things wrong? Yes. Am I going to get many things wrong? Also, yes. Am I? Fa- have I fact checked anything I'm about to say? No. All right. But should you really expect that from Spearhead Sundays? No. You're a moron if you think that, right? So, I think it's funny. I think it's funny. I think that it's hilarious that people think that Trump gives a fuck about them when on the most important day of his presidency, when supposedly they were stealing the election and fraud was happening, instead of him, you know, being in the White House and doing video statements or talking to the news that were lying about him or refuting things or or telling his followers what to do or just being the president, you know, he was just playing golf. <laughs> Like, they they announced that Biden won the presidency while he was halfway through a game of golf. Like, do you, do you really, like, if you really are a Trump guy, do you think he gives a fuck about you after that? I, I think it's, <laughs> it, look, I care, I care a lot about comedy, right? I say that I'm a comedian, but if I had a big show on, you know, like, like that, like, if I had a show on and people were stealing tickets from people who had bought you know, tickets to my show and they started reselling them on scalper websites and instead of doing anything about it, I started playing cricket. I feel like a lot of people will be justified in assuming that I don't give a fuck about you. (laughs) I just think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. And all these people are going to be so... All these people that thought, like, you know, Trump was this evil monster and Biden was going to fix everything, are going to be so bitterly disappointed when nothing changes. You know, the police brutality is going to be a fucking massive issue. They're still going to be putting cunts in cages. Everyone in the Middle East is still going to get bombed, probably even more. You know, one of the lesser talked about things that Trump did was pull a lot of people out of a lot of pointless wars. Guess where they're going? Straight back in. I don't know. I don't want to make this whole of fucking... A political thing, but congratulations, America, um, on on making it uh, very entertaining for the rest of the world. Had so many like Americans. Uh, I was I was joking about how look this this is what it doesn't get me about Americans is you guys actually like like your politicians, you know, like the guys that you vote for, you like them. You shouldn't. They're politicians. They should always be looked at as, hey, what are you up to? You don't like them. You never like them. The minute you start fucking wearing a hat, could you imagine in America someone wearing a Scott Morrison hat? Yeah, go ScoMo. Build that chicken coop. <laughs> that's where that's where you, you fucked up. Americans treat their politicians like sports teams. 
like down to how it's reported on and how the politicians themselves act. They've got their merchandise. They've got their own chance. Build the wall. Lock her up. They've got rallies. They have sporting events. You know, who can smash the most windows of black-owned businesses in 30 seconds? they got their own events. It's crazy. You should never like your politicians, especially the ones you voted for, because that's when you start falling into blind faith, you know? Politics is like, in America, seems to be a mix of a sport and religion, of like, go my team, and no matter what my team does, they're, they're fucking, they can't be evil because, because I believe in them so much. It's so funny. You, you, I think Australia, we have it right, you know? Anyone in charge is a dickhead. That's the perfect way to run your country as a cit- as a citizen because the citizens should run the country, the politicians should listen to us. And the politicians only really listen to Australia. There's exceptions, obviously, but I feel like we have them pretty good because we think they're dickheads no matter who they are, even if you voted for them, you know? Like I, I, I was talking about this, you know, I said, America, you guys need uh, more apathy and more scrutiny. You need to fucking you need to stop thinking these people are gods no matter what team you are, especially if you voted for them. You need to look at your politicians as dickheads. It worked for us when we were a prison, it works for us today, right? And then some American hit me up and was like, "Oh, yeah, it's your fault they're dickheads. You keep voting for dickheads." I said, "Typical foreigner doesn't understand Australian culture. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter if you're a saint. Fuck, you could cure cancer." as a politician, if you're in charge of us, you're a dickhead. That's Australian culture. Whoever's the boss is a dickhead. I mean, even me, I'm sure that Keelan thinks I'm a bit of a dickhead and he should because I'm his boss. That's how it works. Anyone in charge is a dickhead. Now that can get unhealthy, you know, for sure. For me, definitely I have an unhealthy attitude to authority. Absolutely. For sure. I took that to the max. When I was in school, you know, I was a menace. I disrupted the learning for other people. I would vandalize the classrooms. I got a bad mark kind of on purpose just to prove that I didn't need high school. Everyone told me I, I had to do well in high school or I would fail in life. So I almost out of spite failed high school. Isn't that just the most up myself thing that I could ever say? Yeah, I failed high school on purpose. <laughs> Like, it's not because I'm a dickhead. It's not because I'm not dumb. I'm not bad at math. I failed math on purpose. Just just to prove that, that I'm smarter than the entire schooling system. I handicapped myself from an early age. I'm not dumb. I'm so, I'm so uh, beyond everyone else. I'm such an elevated state of being and such a big fucking brain that I failed school on purpose just to give myself a disadvantage to make it more fair for everyone else in the world. How arrogant of me to say. But it is true, you know. That's what I did. I was like, oh, you think I need this shit? Watch this. I'm going to fail my way through year 12 and still come out the other end successful. And someone argued that I have... Uh, so You know what? I would say that, that both people were correct. I was correct. I managed to, to do something and I'm becoming something without high school. But also, I'm a bit of a dumb cunt. <laughs> so I, I think... I think no one was correct there. I think we both made some good points. And it's it's a it's a bit of a stalemate there. I think that's what happened there. Uh, one second. I need my inhaler. And no, I'm not I'm not fucking I'm absolutely not pausing it. What is this? A professional podcast? You want a professional podcast? Guys, check out Luke and Lewis. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, we did the roast of Bluest Spears on the Luke and Lewis main channel. It's a great, like, 25-minute video where we, like, roasted each other. Ro- well, everyone roasted me. Luke Kidgel, uh, Rory Lowe, Keelan, Ruben, Jasmine, my girlfriend. Luke's girlfriend was there as well. Uh, and we just roasted me, and, and then uh, I, uh, at the very end, tried to roast everybody else, and it was such a good fucking video, such a fun time. It was, like, so good to write stand-up again, you know? It was, like, it wasn't really stand-up, but it was jokes. I haven't written, like, just pure jokes for ages. I need my inhaler. Um, dude, wait. It was so fucking awesome to do, and the video is great, um... 
and uh, it's going really, really well. So uh, that's it's it's good, and it's the final ever, hopefully, Zoom thing we'll have to do because COVID has been defeated, obviously because it was all a hoax until the election. You know, great job, Australia. You know, we did a lot of pretending here. I uh, as as soon as as soon as Biden won the election, my grandma actually jumped off the ventilator. She went for a run. We uh we she's such a good actor. You know, she was like, oh well, I was just playing with you guys. You know, it looked like I was going to die for a minute there, but that was just to make sure Biden won the election. Of course, we ended up actually uh, digging up Grandpa. He'd been buried for a, we thought he was dead. He's been down there for thirty days. He got up and he was like, oh, fuck, I'm I'm a bit hungry after pretending, you know, pretending that COVID was real. (laughs) Gotcha. (laughs) Wuhan. Bat soup. Gotcha. Just wanted Biden to win the election, of course. How crazy is it that Biden turns 79 in three days? You know, I was joking about the gold digger thing, but it's also kind of reality. Can, Can he, I know Trump was really old, but I feel like, I feel like he seems a bit more sprightly than Biden. Biden has his moments. Biden, all the all that Biden has over Trump in terms of like, who's who's the more fit in deathly ill old man? That's that's the race, right? And but the only thing Biden has, and he keeps doing it over Trump, is jogging. You know, like let's be real, mental capacity. Biden has a few slip ups. Trump says some insane things, but his brain is functioning. You know. Like, every now and then Trump will say some crazy things, and he'll be like, oh, that's a bit crazy. Is he mentally sane? Oh, yes. He And the answer is yes, Trump is sane. He's just a cunt. <laughs> you know, he's just an asshole. He just doesn't give a fuck about you, and he might be a bit of a scam artist. That's like Trump, right? But he's definitely there in his head. Trump, Biden, however, uh, yes, he can jog, and he's definitely physically fitter, but mentally sometimes he's, he leaves. I've got hairy legs, you know, like every now and then he just checks out, you know, like he's, he, he could go for a run, but you know, halfway through the run, he might forget where he's going. That's, that's the vibe. Trump is not going for a run. He, he, he can, he, Trump can dance from the waist up. You see those videos? He's like dancing, but it's only from the waist up. He, he might do like one, one knee bend, but then you see him go, oh, shouldn't do that. Cause he's top heavy. He's a very top heavy man. You know, his brain works and his body works from the waist up, but he's not going for a run. Biden, however, could definitely go for a run. He might be used to running away from Kamala Harris. No, not the injection. I want to be president now. You know? How, how honestly, how far... I, I said so many times I'm not going to make this a political podcast. What I meant was I'm not really going to state any fucking opinions or argue or, or treat one side like they're evil for voting for the guy, you know? It's like, how are you going to call some coal miner evil for voting for Trump just because Trump said he would keep his industry alive? It's like, yeah, cool, coal's bad, but the dude needs to feed his kids. So we need to, you can't just end that man's life. You need to slowly transition to a better thing. That's, is that insane? I guess so. I might be insane, guys. I do have blue hair, you know. I should be fucking screaming with joy. I should be out in the streets, you know, dancing, going, fuck yeah. 79-year-old man is in charge of the biggest country and most important country in the world. That's good. (laughs) For real, though, I think, do you reckon he makes it to the end of his term? I don't think he does. Because he'll what? He'll be 83 four years from now. 83. You can't have someone in their 80s in charge of a country. The dude can't even work a phone. You know, at least Trump handled Twitter. <laughs> he used Twitter so well, he almost caused a civil war. I've never seen social influencing on that that scale. Incredible. I reckon two years in, Biden goes, I have hairy legs and I am giving up the presidency to corn pop. I mean, Kamala. You know, and then and then and then it's instead of and instead of like you know metaphorically handing over the torch, he just literally gives her a controller, and she goes, "What's this for?" For the drones. Have at them. There's a couple of kids crossing a road in the Middle East. They might be terrorists. <laughs> Looks like they're carrying nukes. Uh, sorry, Biden, put your glasses on. Those are those are sticks. I know, but don't they look like nukes? All right. Hit the big button. The only button on it says fucking bomb. <laughs> I th- I just think that's funny. You know? 
I mean, that's that's women's rights. They can commit war crimes too, up there with the best of them. Anyway, guys, COVID restrictions have been lifting here in Australia, obviously because the election's over. It's uh, it's obviously not real, uh, and that's uh, and that's that's great, um, man. I'm going to get flagged by some YouTube algorithm. All they're going to hear is me saying COVID isn't real, and 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 that'll be it. They'll shut everything down. Shut it down. Uh, I actually left the house to do a thing. It was so good. Jazz and I went. We got burgers. It was amazing. Uh, if, if, if there, I, I did the same thing I did when restrictions eased last time. I waited a week. I hope you guys did that too. Cause remember I was for a while there, I was the COVID clairvoyant. Now I feel like I'm not too sure what's going to happen. Okay. I'm, I'm in two minds. I'm in like the mind of as long as the government keeps track of the cases we know about, maybe we could be New Zealand or there's going to be one and it's going to go through and fuck us up. I'm, I'm in two camps. I don't really know where I stand on it. But before, man, there was a, there was a long while where I would, back back in fucking January on the official podcast, I was saying, eh, I don't know, I think this looks pretty real. Then we got we had the first lockdown, then they let us out. And I said, remember, I said, don't go out. They haven't beaten it. Stay home. Wait and see. And you know what the fuck happened? Massive second wave. I said there was going to be another wave. That shit happened. And now this one, I don't really know. I I waited a week to be safe. I hope you guys did too. You know, I was like, I'm going to wait a week and before I start going and doing shit with with other people, and I'll just see what happens. And you know, I waited a week and we had no cases. I was like, all right, it's on. I'm going to do shit. I'm going to bring Luke and Lewis back in the studio. Let's fucking get it done. And it's been great, but I, but I tell you, if there is one case, it's all over because I, where I don't know if it's like that where in your area, but I've been to two different suburbs, really far away from each other, and uh, it, yeah, no one is social distance. There's like there is no social distancing. The mask thing, people are wearing masks, but like they're walking past people who are eating that are not, uh, and then. The people that are eating are like passing different tables that they don't know. So if one of them had it, they'd give it to another whole table. And I don't know. I, I feel like it's it's great and the lockdown definitely worked, uh, but it, it could get fucking nuts again. But we'll see. I, I think that if it does get nuts again, you just can't lock us down. I don't think people are, I, I don't think people are going to do it again. You know, I was pro the second one. I think, you know, let's fucking try our best to beat it. But I I don't think people are going to do it again. I mean, I would fucking hate that. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. Heaven forbid it happens again. Hopefully not. And I hope you guys are uh, trying to follow the rules. You know what is funny, though? Jazz and I, with the 25 kilometer limit, we just realized today that that shit is just not being enforced at all because we've been stopped at a bunch of checkpoints by cops and uh, Jazz gives them her driver's license and... We've been stopped maybe four times and they look at her license and they go, yep, all good. See you later. They go, yep, where are you going? And we go, we're going this way. And they go, yeah, no worries. See you later. Uh, and we've Jazz realized today that because we moved recently, her license still has her old address, which is way more than 25 kilometers away. So to the cops, obviously the cops are just not, it has her real address on the back, but they haven't been looking at that. So obviously... You know, if if you actually looked at my girl's license, it would say that we have violated the 25 kilometer limit and we're heading in a direction to violate it even more. They're obviously not even reading her license. They just look at it and it's all for show. So, you know, the 25 kilometer limit might not even be working at all. We just we just laughed about that yes today because she goes, Oh, hang on. I just realized that my my actual address is not on my license. It's on the back. None of these cops have looked at the back. So they're not checking at all, obviously. We were like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, you know, that's a thing. What else has been going on in my life? It's, yeah, it hasn't been really been anything. It's just been the election. I, uh, it's, it is, it is, it's such a weird position to be in, like, as a comedian, because, I try not to, I don't want to be this preachy guy, but it's so hard to like make fun of Trump without, without like fitting into all of those other comedians whose only career is making fun of Trump. 
I, I will say I will say one thing. Thank fuck for COVID because we can't do. I was very angry about not being able to do comedy. I still am, but but for these next two weeks, I think it's a fucking blessing because, dear God, if if comedy was around, like I remember when Trump got elected, if comedy was around now. If I, I I would definitely be listening to like seven different uh, Melbourne open mic comedians do fucking shitty Trump eulogies in a row for sure for the next month it'd be hey Trump lost go Biden I guess you couldn't build a wall around those ballot machines zing got him and the crowd would be like oh my god this is terrible <laughs> you know. If, or, or like seeing another comedian get up and make fun of Trump without giving him the respect of saying his name and pretending there's some kind of revolutionary. It's like, dude, I've seen that bit five times. Get over it. That's one good thing. But hopefully, you know, I was reading about the, the restrictions. It uh, it's, so hard to, it's so hard to tell. People keep asking me. It looks like maybe I could do some kind of show towards the end of the year, maybe. But I don't know if I want to do some weird restricted show. In, in my head, I, I've kind of been thinking stand-up doesn't happen until next year. But I don't really know. I don't know if you can tell, guys. I haven't do, done I haven't done anything. Some interesting things have, have been happening, though. We got we got all properly set back up with Luke and Lewis. So if you're if you're looking for a podcast that's fucking fire right now, Luke and Lewis is the place to be. I'm going to be honest. This episode is going to be a bit all over the place because I've done nothing except for refresh Twitter, and I'm sure you you have also done the same. Uh, I, I might I might talk about the fraud stuff because that's kind of interesting. But Luke and Lewis is is fire right now. If you if you kind of stopped listening to it because you got sick of the Zoom episodes, I think a lot of people did that. Now's the perfect time to jump back on board again. The show is really really good. It looks awesome. We're doing a multi cam setup. We're finally back in person, and uh, we've been uh, we've been talking a little bit about around. If you if you tune into my Twitch stream, we've been talking to a few people, and some exciting things are coming up uh, that I cannot confirm or deny, but. Uh, you know, we've been talking to some people and uh, I, I feel very, very good about it. Hopefully more information will be coming. But uh, you know me, I'm always making moves behind the scenes. I've got some big shit coming. Dude, speaking of big shit coming, guess what popped up in my email again? An ad for Raid Shadow Legends. Let's go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that shit just to piss people off. Because remember, the last time I did a Raid Shadow Legends ad, I uh, got so much flack for it that I, this was at the start of the pandemic as well, when I just desperately needed cash to keep fucking paying my employees or I'd have to let them go. So I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to advertise your fucking game, right? I thought it was no big deal. And I get so many fucking comments that are angry at me for advertising this mobile game that you don't have to download, that you can just skip the fucking ad, that it's that is just not like an, an evil thing. Sure, it's a mobile game. It's not going to be fucking Call of Duty. It's not going to be Fallout. You know, it's not going to be the best game in the world. It's a mobile game. It's something to play on the fucking train. Lower your standards, okay? And I played the game. I, I fucking downloaded it on my phone before because I saw a bunch of stuff about it being shady and microtransactions. So I decided to check it out. And I was like, look, if you can't play the game and have fun without putting money into it, I won't advertise it. I played it. I genuinely fucking loved it. I played it for days. People think I'm lying. I'm not lying. I played it for days. I loved it. Didn't spend a dime on it. I loved it, right? So I'm like, great, cool. This is good for a fucking mobile game. I'll advertise it. I get so many fucking hate comments uh, from people. So I decide, so I crack it. I'm like, you know, I'm not taking, you know me, I'm not taking any of this feedback constructively. I'm doubling down. I changed my whole name to, to fucking Shadow Legends Spears. I changed the whole podcast to Shadow Legends Sundays. I talked for an hour about how good the game was. They weren't paying me for that. I went off, I tweeted about it for three fucking days, rubbed it in people's faces. And I, to, to, to my credit, I think I changed the entire culture of how my audience views brand deals because I basically just punished them. You know, I treated you guys like uh, the classroom with that shitty teacher that couldn't control the class. He said, if I hear one more noise, I'm holding everyone back. It's your lunchtime. I did that shit to you. You know, if I get one negative comment about a brand deal, I'm talking about that brand for a week. It's your entertainment. It's your newsfeed. You know, it's your video. And I did that for free, right? 
Changed my whole Twitter for a, for like three, four days. Did a whole hour-long podcast about it for free. Didn't charge him a dime. And then after that, I realized that I fucking placed the, the ad read in the wrong spot without getting approval from the brand, and they never paid me. <laughs> I did that shit for free. I, you guys were right. I never should have trusted them. I never got paid for that. That's so funny. I, after cracking it and being like, I'm doing this to support my business and my fucking employees. I just have to cancel the whole tour and you're trying to stop me from making money and paying my bills and my rent so I can keep making shit for, for you for free. And then I never got paid. <laughs> fucking hell. But this time, I'm going to make sure I get paid before I do the rate. You know, so even if I do it wrong, I'll go, what bag? I don't know what you're talking about. But I'm definitely doing that shit again. And you know what? I want to see a bunch of thank yous in the comment section. Thank you so much. Another Raid Shadow Legends ad. That's This is just what we wanted. <laughs> oh, fuck. What else are we doing here? What else did I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. The, I want to talk about the fraud thing with the election. I think it's it's actually, on a serious note, a really interesting thing. Because they, they will find fraud. Because you will find fraud in every single election. It's just like, how much fraud will you find? Like, enough... I don't, I don't think there is enough fraud for to, to win Biden in the election. I think that's like hundreds of thousands of votes in so many different states. It would, it would be such a coordinated effort. I don't think you'd be able to do it without getting pretty obviously caught. Uh, and it being overturned. But but in these inquiries that they are doing, they will find fraud because there's fraud in every election, of course. Um, but I'm interested to see is when they find concrete evidence of fraud, because they will, that's obviously going to happen when there's millions, 70 million votes being cast for one candidate, some of those will be fraudulent. And they'll find some that are, that are fake votes for Trump. Because I bet a bunch of his crazy, crazy supporters would hear, would be like, oh, well, the Dems are planning on doing a fraudulent thing. We need to help out Trump. Let's do some for ourselves. That will obviously happen, right? So I'm interested to see what happens when they, in court, when they find, a, you know, they'll probably find thousands of fraudulent votes. I wonder if they'll go, look at all of these fraudulent votes. This means that the whole fucking thing was fake. We need to do it again. Or we need to dis disqualify all of these things. Like, I wonder how finding fraudulent votes, which they definitely will, will affect the whole presidency thing. Um, It's just, it's such an interesting thing, especially because with the Supreme Court, it's stacked for Republicans. So, so like... You know, if you you know, basically all the all the Supreme Court judges have to do is is really just go, yeah, look, it was fraudulent. They should interpret the law correctly, but they could not. In my understanding of it, anyway, like I said at the start of the podcast, I'm a fucking moron. So I would be interested. It is, you know, what is fucking? There is one thing that makes me go, yeah, you know what? They that's a good point. No riots. As of recording this, not a single fucking riot. But you know if Trump won, if Trump won, bro, you know it would have gone off. But as of my recording and to my understanding at the moment, I may have missed some shit, uh, there's been no riots. 70 million really disappointed people and with a lot of them thinking that it was a rigged election, not a single ounce of violence that I know of as of recording this on Sunday. That's pretty fucking, you know, not a good look for the up for the other team. Kudos to all those crazy, violent, white supremacist Trump supporters for not wigging out. Because I thought it was, I, I honestly thought no matter who won, I knew it was going to be close. I thought Trump was going to win by a tiny margin. Uh, I knew it was going to be close. Um, but I thought no matter who won, shit was going to go off. I thought there'd be riots either side. But, you know. To the supporters of Trump's credit, there's been nothing that I know of or obviously nothing big enough for it to be crazy news because you know if it what there was, it would be everywhere. It is, you know what also is funny is seeing um, Rupert Murdoch abandon Trump. Like Fox News have gone off him. All these mainstream media things that used to support him have gone off him. And that's just Rupert Murdoch going, all right, well, that's a loser. Can't make money out of a loser. Let's hit up Biden, see what we can do over here. It's like so fucking, 
the media is fucking corrupt. That is something that I think he has um, done well is the, is the media corruption thing because it is so bad. Like I saw Malcolm Turnbull uh, was talking about how he talked to, to Rupert Murdoch personally after he was booted out and Rupert admitted to him to like uh, he didn't like Malcolm Turnbull because he didn't think Malcolm would play ball with him as well as a different leader would. So he stirred up all of this insurrection talk and made Malcolm look bad in the news. And I'm no fan of the Liberals, but, you know, Rupert Murdoch did do that to interfere in the fucking leadership and then we ended up getting a new prime minister because of it. Like that, the media shit is like so scary how much they can influence the public and and people in, uh, you know, positions of power it's fucking it's fucking crazy and then even worse than that social media like seeing trump get fact checked i don't know i i don't i'm on the fence about it i don't know how i feel about it it's like on one hand i think fuck twitter being able to censor the leader of the world is scary because that power could be so easily abused but then on the other hand i'm like well if he is saying some crazy fake shit, a, a little fact check thing isn't the worst thing in the world, but then who does the fact check thing that could be abused? I, from what I saw, I don't think they abused it, but it is so easily abused. It's like such a fucking scary power to give to a private entity, basically. I think that social media should be viewed as a utility. I think it should be a human right because it is in today's time, the ability to communicate. That is how we communicate. You know, you can't say that's not how we do it, especially with lockdown. You know, how many people would have gone insane if they didn't have social media to connect them to their friends? Like uh, all of that stuff is, is I think really, really important. And I think that social media should be viewed as a utility and a human right. But then what do you do about all those people doing crazy hateful stuff that does incite violence, you know? like from from fucking uh, super right-wing paramilitary groups to fucking literally ISIS on Twitter to, you know, uh, you know, crazy Antifa accounts that organize violent acts. Like, it does happen. So if you make these things a human right, how the fuck do you police and control groups that advocate for violence? Because, you know, if it's a human right, they should be allowed to do that on there because... With free speech, you can, you know, you can say whatever you want, but I don't know. It's crazy. I don't have the answers, guys. All I have is questions. I'm trying not to get too serious with this episode, as I'm saying every single time. Let's see what else. What else do I have written down here? Um, what the fuck is that? I've written down model Insta. I'm a dude. You're not funny. What have I, what does that mean? I write down so much shit that makes perfect sense when I write it down and then, and then I don't. And then I have attempted murder on calmest shoppers. I have no idea what attempted murder on calm shoppers means. Model Insta, I'm a dude, you're not funny. That is seems like something that I thought was so fucking funny there would be no way I could possibly forget what that means and here I am standing at it staring at it I have no idea what the fuck it means absolutely no idea here's something the boys actor I said a few podcasts ago that uh you know I've been watching the boys and I love the boys the series if you don't if you don't have Amazon Prime get it for the boys it's literally worth it um so fucking great and funny and hilarious and well made and such a satire on America in general uh and and I said the main character is Australian he says cunt all the time he's playing like a like a working class cockney english bloke but he is Australian and he says cunt and if you just in your own head canon imagine that he's just an Australian guy it plays so much better because the way that he says cunt is not in an English way it's in an Australian way and it makes it so much more fun and a lot of people emailed me and they said hey Lewis the guy is actually from New Zealand he's not Australian and now I would like to re- remind you guys um, of a well-known uh, law in Australia and and that law is 
Uh, someone is only from New Zealand until they become famous. If someone is from New Zealand and then they become famous, they are Australian. Taika, Taika Waititi, famous Australian. He proves this rule. Russell Crowe, another famous Australian. There are so many famous Australians that used to be born in New Zealand until they become became famous. The, the guy in The Boys... He's been in The Lord of the Rings, super famous, incredibly famous, amazing actor. He is now Australian. Get that through your fucking thick New Zealander skulls, all right? If you're born in New Zealand and you blow up and become famous, you are Australian. I'm sorry I didn't make the rule, but I will enforce it, okay? That is how this shit works. Um Look, with, with the amount of election talk and bullshit I've been doing now, I'm going to get into the miscellaneous bit at the end, answer some emails, because I didn't do it last podcast with Jazz, so I thought I would just fucking get into a bit of miscellaneous bit at the end, answer your questions, um, and uh, see where we are at. Podcast. Ah, oh, there we go. Inbox. All right. So um, if... Uh, you know, if you have a question, if you need some life advice, if you have a funny story you think me and the listeners would enjoy, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. All right, we have this uh, email from Perrin. Hey, Lewis, I recently got a job, so I've been able to support you on Patreon again. Oh, thank you very much. Also, I love the Twitch streams, and I can't wait for you to get the bag for real with that endeavor. We love supportive audiences here. We love that, okay? Why, if you like someone, why wouldn't you want them to secure the bag? As long as they don't sacrifice themselves or their integrity, I understand that. I don't think I do that, you know? I mean, I've stopped. I've had to stop saying cunt, but that's just to get my message out there more because YouTube's algorithm stepped on it. I was saying, I was saying cunt when it cost me money, when it cost me reach. Can't do that shit. So you know, I feel like I've remained me. I mean, I had, I do have blue hair, so I understand the suspicion. <laughs> I understand the suspicion that perhaps maybe I have changed. You know what's funny about the blue hair thing? I'm getting a haircut on Monday. I haven't had a haircut since lockdown in Melbourne started. It's been over 100 days. What is that? Three, six, like almost four months I haven't had a haircut. Longest, I used to go every three weeks. You understand. That's how much I loved having the same haircut. Now I haven't been for four fucking months and it's blue. So I'm going to walk into this barber who I've been seeing for two years, I think, with blue fucking hair. I'm going to be hit. He's going to look at me and be like, bro, lockdown hit this cunt hard. I don't know what I'm going to get. What should I get? I'm, it's happening tomorrow, so your suggestions will be locked. What the fuck should I do? I've, I've realized that the slick back thing doesn't work. I do this little dangly side hair thing. That works a little bit. The e-boy, fuckboy thing kind of works. The slick back thing is out. So I can do anything. It's really long. You can't really tell because it is done back, but you can see I've got fucking sideburns. I have almost like a mullet going. It's so long at the back. What the fuck should I do? I've got I'm going in there literally with no plan. I'm normally I go do this, do this, do this, I show them photos and I want to look exactly like this. If you fuck it up, I'm going to rage. That's how that's my normal attitude. This time I go in, I'm going to go, "Hey man, it's blue. Do your best." <laughs> Cuz you can't change the color. I have about one finger's worth of regrowth, which I've worked out is about maybe for me to get back to my old tried and true hairstyle, it's going to take four months minimum, probably more like five or six. So I'm not getting, I'm not getting back to normal Louie till fucking April. So I don't know what to do with this. I'm, and I'm open to suggestions if it can be salvaged in any way. Anyway, this email. Support you on Patreon again. Thank you. Blah, blah. Loving the Twitch streams. Awesome. I live in the middle of nowhere in Iowa. The state only has a population of 3 million and my city has about 150,000 people. It's painful to admit, but no one here takes the coronavirus seriously. What, in your town or America in general? The quarantine was never enforced and people tend to not wear masks in public. I would say half and half. Yeah, and that, like... When half of the people aren't wearing masks, that kind of doesn't make the people, that kind of makes the people who are wearing masks useless because masks protect, they don't really protect you, they protect other people. And if the other people aren't wearing a mask, it's kind of no point to you wearing one at all. That's a shame. Um, I know there is an America bad meme trending and I hate to add fuel to the fire because it's a lazy joke, but do people in Frankston actually follow the guidelines to your quarantine? Oh, that's so fucking American, is it? Do people do that? <laughs> I feel crazy when I wear a mask in public and I'm and I'm the only one. 
I know I shouldn't, uh, and I would rather wear a mask. Uh, besides all of that bullshit, I hope you have a good rest of 2020. I can't wait for you to really blow up and become a household name, even over here in this ass backwards country. Thank you very much, mate. I'm working on it. Hopefully, you know, with with international borders being closed, it's kind of given me a little breather to work on that a little bit more before I start fucking going there, which is, you know, the upside of it. Um, yeah, every, uh, everyone does it here. Um, I've seen one crackhead not wearing a mask. And then I've seen one Karen walk into a store with a mask. And then as soon as she left the store, she ripped it off. Uh, like she, like she was like the main character of some fucking TV show. And she was like looking around for other people to say something, but we all kind of were like, fuck whatever. So yeah, for, for the most part, everyone does it. There's a couple of people that wear them wrong, but I don't think it's on purpose. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, in Australia, everyone's been wearing masks and uh, it obviously has worked. That combined with lockdown means we've had zero cases here in Melbourne for an entire week, which is amazing. And I think we should all be very proud of that because, you know, we did sacrifice a lot. You know what's funny with all the anti-Dan Andrews, if you're American, that's our guy in charge of Victoria, Melbourne, all the anti-Dan Andrews stuff. It's like I, I thought the other day something that, that made me go, oh, yeah, no shit. So... In Australia, in Melbourne, the reason why our cases got so bad was the government had a quarantine and they fucked that up. They did fuck it up, you know. Uh, one of the security guards literally had sex with someone who had COVID, uh, someone that was supposed to be keeping in quarantine, and then that guy went and infected the whole of Melbourne and then we had a big lockdown. And the, the whole, like, anti-Dan Andrews thing was, why are we being punished for Dan Andrews' mistake? Which is not the worst question, but where it gets crazy was... People were saying that there should be no lockdown at all because it's Daniel Andrews' fault, uh, and and all and they were saying that it's Daniel Andrews' fault that COVID got so bad. And I just kind of realized the other day that you can't really believe both of those things. Like you can't believe that the COVID quarantine hotel thing was a fuck up, and that there should be no lockdown. Right? If the quarantine fuck up being being a bad thing, then Lockdown should be essential because if you think that the lockdown fuck up being a bad thing is true, then uh, you must be for the lockdown because obviously there's lots of COVID cases and COVID is, is bad. Whereas, you know, if you thought that that the lockdown wasn't necessary, then you can't also really be angry about the COVID hotel lockdown at all because you don't think coronavirus is a big deal at all. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't really go together. Either hotel quarantine was a bad thing and a terrible fuck up and COVID is real. Uh, so then lockdown is a necessary but bad thing or lockdown is bullshit. Therefore, I don't give a fuck about hotel quarantine at all because that quarantine was also bullshit. Like it doesn't really, those two things, I don't think you can believe at the same time. Um, was just a thing I thought. Maybe oh yeah, no shit. You can't think that COVID is real and dangerous in regards to this quarantine thing, and that's why you want Dan Andrews fired because he fucked up this thing, and think that the lockdown is unnecessary because it is obviously necessary because look how bad this quarantine thing was. It doesn't go together. Anyway, um, oh here's a good one. Trying to reassure my girlfriend that I won't cheat or get seduced. Hey, Lewis, my name is Jack. I just started a new personal training job that has me driving to clients, sometimes public areas, sometimes their houses. A lot of these clients are women, and I'm a young, fit, attractive guy. Bit up yourself, but we love the confidence. My girlfriend has a lot of anxiety that something might happen, and I'm here to and I'm and I'm here to ask for help on reassuring her that it will be fine and earn her trust. I love her to bits and I can understand how she feels. I would feel at least a little bit weird if she went to a lot of strange men's houses. Yeah, I think that's a that's a fair concern, I guess. We've been together for less than a year and she's had bad relationships in the past. Oh, that makes it a bit harder for you. Any ideas? I don't want this to be some long-term issue that gets out of control. Thank you for answering. I'm a big fan and I'll give you a free training session someday when the world stops being crazy. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, I, I, I used to be a personal trainer and I was around a lot of women that were that, that, that you are a lot fitter then. Uh, so I, un I understand the concern from your girlfriend. I was single at the time, so of course I was fucking all of those milfs. Uh, I wasn't. Um, I I feel like I am kind of equipped to deal with this because as someone who has a bit of like uh, 
I, for lack of a better word, fame, right, has a fan base. And, you know, with that do, do come girls that find you attractive because of the position that you're in. And, you know, it, it, it is a lot easier to sleep with people. When I was single and I had a bit of status, that's like the number one attractive thing to women beyond looks and often beyond money is status. That's what girls like. And, you know, it kind of makes sense being attracted to a guy who's in a position of power and status and that other people look up to. It's it's attractive. Oh, you ever see those guys that are attractive because people find them attractive? You know what I mean? Like there's some ugly dudes that for whatever reason have something about them that girls like. And, and if there's one thing that girls like, it's girls liking them. Like often when, when you find, when you have a girlfriend, people can go, oh, fuck, girls start hitting on me now after I have a girlfriend. It's like something about girls liking you makes girls like you. It's, I don't know, I don't know why, but it is a thing, right? So this is, you know, this is something that I have talked about with my girl, especially when it was earlier on and, you know, girls find, girls find you attractive when you have status. I don't know what to say. Um, and, uh, the only thing that you can really do is earn the trust. Um, I, I I think that what you can do is you can, I mean, there's, there's, as a personal trainer, you can say, look, I'm a lot of the time I'm training people that are not attractive. That's why they see me. You know, I train people that are very unattractive, fat, unfit people. Uh, so there's nothing to worry about there. Or often it's like older women who, uh, who are, who I don't find attractive because they're older. Uh, it, it's it's something that honestly you earn. So she's worried about it at first, and this happened with with girls that I dated in the past. I, you know, girls before Jazz. Jazz has been pretty good about it, uh, but before Jazz, I dated a girl that was really insecure about it for a short period of time, and you just kind of you just kind of earn it. You just prove yourself, really. Like you just need to you just need to say, look, I'm I'm with you. And I have no intention of cheating on you. Uh, and also maybe a little bit of honesty is good. Like, like don't, like she's not dumb, right? So there would be people that you probably could get it on with. So if she goes, oh, well, you're going to be in people's houses and you're, you're attractive and young and people will find you attractive. If you go, no, that's insane. No one's ever found me attractive. That's ridiculous. No client would ever be attracted to you. That is a lie, which makes her go, well, if he's lying to me about that, then there must be a client that finds him really attractive. Fuck, that freaks me out. So I would be honest. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, of course, everyone wants to fuck me. I'm an incredible personal trainer and I'm very sexy. Of course, all my clients want to fuck me, but I wouldn't say that none of them want to. I would just say, well, look, if it happens, if a client does find me attractive, you know, I will stab, I'll put up a clear boundary and I'll make it very obvious that I have a girlfriend. Um, and then if it continues beyond that, and if they don't get the hint, I'll stop working with that client, which, you know, you probably should do anyway, because it's kind of harassment. If someone hits on you and you make it clear, you're not interested and you're going to their house to work for them and they keep hitting on you kind of like sexual harassment, I suppose. Um, mild version of it anyway. Uh, so I wouldn't lie and say that would never happen, but I also wouldn't be like, yeah, of course everyone wants to fuck me. I would say that that trust is something that you earn. Um, and the best way to alleviate her fears is talk to her honestly about it. Um, ask if there's anything that you can do to alleviate her fears. I'd say, you know, would you like me to talk about you? I can do that. I can mention that I have a girlfriend. Um, but ultimately trust comes from her. You can't force someone to trust you. You have to earn it and prove that you're trustworthy. The only way to do that is to just continue doing what you're doing and continue not cheating on it. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I struggled with when I was early on in a, in a relationship with another girl was, um, you know, girls being attracted to me because, I was, I'm, I, I was and still am in this weird position where sometimes out of the blue girls will just hit on you because they find status attractive and they, you know, they, you know, status and humor is a huge thing for girls. And I'm not the best looking guy in the world, especially not now with my blue fucking hair. I mean, I, I, when my chin is installed, it's over for you hoes. And I'll, I imagine that I'll have to ban women from my shows. They'll be rushing the stage so much now, or, or they'll be just be leaving carpet stains from their, that, that wop, you know, but until then, 
it's manageable. And uh, you earn it, you know, you just fucking... I don't know what to say. You, you just you just have to talk to her and be honest with her and listen to her and ask why she's insecure about it and, and, and then maybe go, well, look, you know, if you were cheated on in the past or if someone did this, I need you to understand that I'm not that person and I would never do that to you um, and I, I don't want to fuck my clients. Another Another good reason is, look, you know, me fucking my clients would fuck my money up. Because that's a that's a one and done thing, or that's a two and three and done thing. You know, no one wants to keep paying me to work them out if I'm fucking them. That's just going to wreck it. And a lot of my clients are married. A lot of my clients have partners themselves. I'm just not interested in that. Uh, and you just have to trust me. Um, and uh, that's that's what I would do. And and my other big piece of advice would be don't fuck any of your clients. <laughs> and you you should be sweet. Um, So yeah, that's my advice to you. All right, we're going to do one more and then I'm going to wrap it up here. My university fucked me over. Oh, this is this is unfamiliar waters for me. I failed high school. I've never been to uni. Failed high school, finished one quarter of a TAFE course, still paying off my hex debt. Thank you. Hey, Lewis, love the podcast and your stand-up uh, and everything you do. Thank you very much. I am 18 in my first year of university uh, and about a year and a half ago, I had to pick what course I wanted to study. I went to a couple of open days at a uni I wanted to study at. There were a few courses I was interested in and while I was at the open days, I asked questions about what I could expect from each of them. After speaking with two members of staff on two separate occasions, I decided to apply for a course they had recommended. I should make it clear the online information about all the courses I was interested in was appalling, so my only option was to get information from the staff in person. Yeah, that's fucking, I know how you feel, because I got, I got sucked into this music production course and it was horrific. After starting this year, I found out that the course I'm in does not lead on to the degree... After starting this year, I found out that the course I'm in does not lead on to the degree course I want to do. Right. And what's worse is that I was only told that after I had paid for the first year of tuition. I've been in contact with the university and I've had some mixed information. It's been suggested I might be able to switch courses next year or the year after that, but nothing has been confirmed. I want to do a course in film production. I have a passion for editing and cinematography. Hopefully you can give me some advice and if not, I'll at least get on the podcast. Keep up the good work and have a shit one because I certainly have. Yeah, dude, that... That university shit is a fucking nightmare. They are so disorganized. They don't know what's going on. And that shit changes every six months. My advice to you would literally be to call every single week and Every single week you set at every time you end a call, you send an email and you say, Hey Marie, thanks. You never rude, never abuse them, never be rude. This is someone from this is coming from I worked in customer service and I know how terrible it is on the inside and how little gets done. This is the only way to get shit done is to be that annoying customer. When I worked in customer service, let me tell you, so often I would get on a call and I would have some cunt would have some poor bar it would have some terrible problem and then I go yep I'm gonna fix that for you I would hang up and go straight to the next call fuck him it's someone else's problem I did that all the time and so did everyone around me the only people who had complex problems that got their shit sorted would be people who called every single week and followed up with an email so that's what I would do because if you talk to someone on the phone and they tell you all this shit and they give you all these promises and then you call up next week and you say, oh, Susan said she was going to do this. Did she do that? I don't know if she did that. I don't know if she told you that. And I, there's no way to prove that. If you call them up and they go, yeah, so you should know in about a week, you email them after that call. Hey, Susan, thanks for talking to me uh, and confirming that next week I will be told about this. I'll call you then. And then you know what? On Monday, you fucking call them and you go, hey, I'm just looking for an update. And they go, oh, there's no update. You go, no worries. I'm going to call next week. And you send them email. Hey, Susan, thanks for updating me that there's no update. Uh, I, I understand that there's nothing going on at the moment. I'll give you a call next week to check in and see how it's 
going. Never be rude. Never be patronizing. Be the nicest person ever on the phone and on emails. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, you're getting fucked. Yes, you're being lied to. But if you're an asshole, they will literally write a note on your file. This person is a cunt. If I got a call and I saw a note that said this person is abusive, immediately I'm not going to help them. Fuck them. Um, so that's my advice to you is is be nice and follow up every single week. I'm doing that at the moment with my fucking doctors. I need to get a referral for, for a fucking sleep study. You guys know I talked about it months ago. It is not sorted. I am now at the stage where I'm calling my doctor every single fucking week and going, hey, checking in on my referral. Have you got it yet? Has it been sent yet? Yep. No. Great. Bang. Call you next week. And I'm doing that every fucking week. It is a bitch. But ultimately, Ultimately, this person talking about you being able to switch in two years, guess what? As someone who is still paying for a course that they did not complete, that is tens of thousands of dollars of your money that you will have to pay off because of their bullshit admin error and them lying to you or them misleading you or their shitty website or whatever the fucking reason, it doesn't matter. It is tens of thousands of dollars that you will have to pay back for no fucking reason. So sort that out now. It is costing you money. I know it doesn't feel like it at the moment. It didn't feel like it for me, but hex debt is real. That university debt is fucking crippling. It raises your taxes so much and it costs real life money later down the line. That is incredibly frustrating to pay off, especially for uh, when you have a course that you are not using today. Uh, Exhibit A, me, and you in a few years if you do this course for no reason. Do not, under any circumstances, let them scam you out of what will be twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for you to get fucking nothing. And not to mention two years of your life wasted into trying to get into this thing that you actually wanted to do, all right? That's my advice. Every single week, without fail, and after every single call, send an email summarizing what they told you and what you asked for so that when they go the next three weeks, they go, oh, well, you didn't tell us that. You can go, yes, I did. Check this email. So that even if you didn't tell them that on the phone, you got it writing on in, in writing on email. Well, you go, oh, I forgot to say, you know, fucking I need to follow up on this. Everything in writing, nothing will get done unless you harass them, but be polite. That's my advice to you. And that works when in every situation, issues with your bank, issues with your phone, issues with your tax, the ATO, everything. Be that relentless, polite cunt that calls every single week and sends a follow-up email. In business, I do this all the time where I get on the phone with someone, have a business meeting. I go, yep, yep, yep. And then I go, hey, great to talk to you. Just to confirm, I'm getting this for you. I'm getting you this information and I'm doing these things and you're going to do this. I will talk to you in two weeks. And then that way, if they didn't do their shit, you got it in writing of them promising you something and not delivering it. And you can go, well, what's the excuse, cunt? All right, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for supporting me on Patreon. That is how I continue to do everything that we're doing and paying all of the people, especially when there's no shows and brand deals are looking rough other than Raid. Um, but if you want an extra uh, Spearhead Sundays every single week, make sure you support me on Patreon. I didn't get one up this week. Sorry for the Patreon supporters. I'm going to try and do uh, an, an extra long one for you this week. I just, I was, to be honest, I wanted to do an election one. I was waiting for the election. I was like, oh, I won't do one straight after I record. I'll do one after the election tomorrow. And then that ended up being a whole fucking week. And now I'm, I'm here. So uh, for Patreon supporters, there's going to be an extra long Patreon only episode uploaded on Tuesday for you uh, to Patreon and sorry for the delay, but uh, that's how it is uh, and that's how I'll make it up for you. So if you want to join the Discord server, support what I do and get an extra episode of Spearhead Sundays every single week, uh, except for when uh, there's election fraud, <laughs> uh, let me know. All right. Thank you. Fuck you. I'll talk to you soon and I hope you have a shit one. See you on stream, Twitch, Monday. Bye.